Bobby Broyles and Rob Washburn back here to wrap up, which was a fantastic football game here today. Rob, an interesting day to say the least. It began with some interesting weather, some sleet, some snow, and yeah. now we're here. The sun is shining, and, and like I said, it was a fabulous football game today, even though, Jamie you fell on the short end. Yeah, number one and number two delivered yet again. I mean, two great football programs that went head-to-head -head and, once again, down to the final play of the game. Also a great day for FCS football in general, just being in front of a national audience on ABC. Yeah, sellout crowd here. ABC National Television, a great stage for FCS football. And again, the two teams just dis didn't disappoint. They put on a great show for the country today. Absolutely. So let's recap this one as we begin with the first half. JMU off and running with a very emphatic first drive, but then things kind of slowed down for them the rest of the half. Yeah, the game couldn't have started any better. 17 plays, 86 yards, a mix of run and pass, capped by a Ben Danucci pass to Riley Stapleton, and 7 0 JMU in a drive that ate up like half the first quarter. Mm -hmm. But then North Dakota, North Dakota State responded, came back down on their drive. Trey Lance with a big 32-yard run, got them back to 7-7. to And then a couple of big plays to cap the first half that enabled North Dakota State to take a big lead in the halftime. One was an end around, a fake, a fake reverse where Phoenix Sproles was able to get down the sideline for 38 yards and give North Dakota State a 14-7 lead. And then a huge play on a fake field goal that mm -hmm. North Dakota State was able to convert to take ultimately a 21-10 lead into the half. And then as we head into the second half, you could tell, Jamie, you made some adjustments, especially on the defensive end, to slow down Trey Lance a little bit. Yeah, a great job in the second half. North Dakota State with over 200 yards on the ground against the number one ranked rushing defense in the country in JMU, and they've made some great adjustments in the second half. Really shut them down, got a three and out right out of the gate on the first drive, and, and, and get, went down and got a field goal, got back to 21-13. Trey Lance got loose, opening play of the did. fourth quarter in a play that actually was the decider in the game. On a third and 23 play, was able to break down the middle and score from 44 yards out. But give the Dukes some credit. They came back, got another touchdown. The defense came up with a stop on fourth and two and then able to drive the ball down to the two-yard line and then just couldn't convert there at the end. Yeah, tough play there. Right at the end, uh, Ben DiNucci, uh, you know, just he had a great game overall. I mean, we can't – even forget some of the plays he made, especially with his feet there on a fourth and six where he muscled his way for a first down. Yeah, that was on the drive. They brought him back within eight, mm -hmm. converted a fourth down and six, and, and, and made a play, found Riley Stapleton again to pull them again within eight. And then after the stop, you know, to be able to get them down in position, and again, mm -hmm. just an unfortunate ending. And we heard from head coach Kurt Signetti and some of the players at the press conference and in the locker room, this is what they had to say. Uh, very proud of our uh, seniors and uh, disappointed that we couldn't send them away on a happier note. It was a tremendous group of guys and I uh, really uh, miss, uh, you know, them being around. Uh, you know, I do want to congratulate our team on their effort throughout the season, their commitment, their investment in the season. And, uh, you know, I told them, uh, you know, you can't lose sight of all the things you did accomplish uh, throughout this season and uh, your investment uh, during the season. And, uh, you know, I also would like to thank our coaching staff for their effort uh, this season throughout the season. And uh, this is the last time this team will be together uh, as we know it. Uh, and that's, and I hate to, that we have to walk out uh, like we are, but that is life. You don't always get what you want. And uh, so, but I give North Coast State a lot of credit. Yeah, this is what you play for. You know, you play for this moment. You know, you got the number one team and the number two team. You know, um, obviously when they come out and they're winning them, but, you know, I think they'll probably tell you that we were their toughest opponent. You know, um, you know, we were just we were resilient. You know, we showed that all year. And um, it's, this, was, this was a fun game. You live for this kind of game right here. You know, as a football player, as a competitor, you live for the number one and number two team. You know what I mean? That's something you live for. And, you know, it was a, it was a good game to the end of it. So. As a leader, what, what was the message at halftime to, to get you guys back in the game? What was everybody talking about? Uh, the main thing I came in saying, me and Rondell, a lot of the guys just saying, let's go out there and play our brand of ball. We know that's not us out there in the first half. We know we didn't perform up to our level or perform up to our standard that we know we can. So we just said, let's go out there and play our brand of JMU football when we get back out there in the second half. I haven't been here for four years, but I've had the pleasure of being here the last two. Um, and it sure feels like I've been here for four or five. These guys have been nothing but uh, brothers to me in that locker room, so embracing from the time I got here. And um, you know, this is this is the reason I came here to try and play in a game like this. And uh, there's got to be a winner every game. There's got to be a loser every game. And we just you know happened to come up on the short end of the stick today.
Uh, fourth quarter, you're down 28-13. What enabled you to come back? Uh, I think just our heart. You know, uh, we got a great group of seniors, a great group of leaders on this team. Um, you know, so and we're an experienced football team. You know, so and coach always preaches. You know, um, you know if you get down, stay poised, um, stay disciplined, and you know good things are going to happen. I think we did that. Uh, just kind of came up play short. Stuff to put in like one or two sentences. This has been an amazing experience. I uh, wouldn't change it for the world. JMU holds a special place in my heart, and uh, you know it's tough to look back right now just because this hurts so much. But again, wouldn't trade it for the world, and I'm so blessed to be here. Obviously, Rob, a disappointing ending to a great team this year in JMU, but they have really nothing to hold their heads down after such a fantastic season and a lot of great seniors that they'll be losing. Yeah, an unbelievable senior class that has uh, led them back to Frisco, you know, three times in four years and unfortunately has come up short the last couple of times against North Dakota State, but this, uh, this program is in great shape. They have a very strong junior class and uh, this is a program much like North Dakota State that year in and year out is going to be strong. So they, they nothing to hang their heads about at all. Well, that wraps up our coverage from Frisco. For Rob Washburn, I'm Bobby Broyles. We want to thank everyone who's been following our coverage all week. We want to also thank Jamie Greer, who's been behind the camera yeah. for us as well. Got to give her a shout out. So it's been a fantastic week once again here in Frisco. They did a great job of hosting. They did. It's a great, great setting for this uh, for this championship. And uh, hopefully we'll be back here again next January. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that is it from us. We'll see you soon.